Well, this weekend, the Winnipeg Arts Council continues its City of Song celebrations with a unique concert featuring music meant to evoke what Winnipeg means as a home. It's called Sing Me a Song You've Never Heard Before, and it features local artists such as pianist Teresa Thorderson and cellist Nathan Cron. It also features unique collaborations with our city's wordsmiths, including Winnipeg's poet laureate Jimwemwe Undi. Another celebrated wordsmith will also see their words reimagined for classical music purposes, John K. Sampson of the Weaker Thans and Propagandi fame. His words are being reworked into a new song cycle by Karen Sunabaka called Too Far to Walk, and it will be premiered at this weekend's concert by two of Winnipeg's most established opera artists, tenor Aaron Hutton and pianist Lisa Rumpel, both of whom join me this morning in the Classic 107 studios. Good morning. Good morning. Well, maybe let's, uh, either one of you can answer this. What was the inspiration for the for this song cycle to, to come together? Uh, well, I've always been a big fan of The Weaker Thans for many, many years now. And uh, I always thought that uh, it would be great to make them into art songs because I do only classical music. And um, there was one particular, well, two kind of particular moments that sort of inspired me to want to do this. Uh, one was standing on Abenoji Mikna in the middle of winter and looking out at like this sunny prairie day and listening to, I forget which song, but it was some weaker than song. And I was just like, oh man, this is real. Like this is so real to me right now. And I wish that this could be in a song because as doing art songs, you always do poetry from like mainly from different places. And, uh, and in their poems, they're often evoking nature or images that people could relate to in that space. So like in Germany or Austria or something. And, um, and when you're there, you're like, oh, yeah, I get it. And so I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could have something that really made Winnipeg come alive in that mm. way in a classical art song setting? When you sing these words, Aaron, how do you feel about the words and how they represent the the landscape of of Winnipeg and of Manitoba? Um, that's an interesting question. I knew a lot of the weaker than music myself also but this opportunity to kind of dive a bit uh, deeper or differently i guess into john sampson's words has been an interesting um, experience uh, for sure just because he's really creative and his poetry is so uh, different and it evokes so many um, interesting kind of experiences, especially from his unique experience and his life um, being in this city. Um, so it is, a, it's a real treat to kind of explore these kind of Winnipeg connections and how his poetry kind of relates to, you know, the spring thaw in Winnipeg and winter approaching and things like that. So it's kind of traditional, um, themes maybe, but from a really contemporary, interesting uh, perspective. When you think about the music that celebrates <clears throat> Winnipeg or like quintessentially Winnipeg classical music, what sorts of things come to your mind as I say those words? <laughs> and maybe uh, how does how does this cycle try and capture that feeling of standing on a very open Abenoji Mikina looking out <laughs> over the vast expanse of, of nothing, <laughs> so to yeah, speak? Yeah, well, I think that, I mean, obviously when you listen to The Weaker Thens, like there's like a drum kit and there's like a rhythm. So you get caught in kind of like the catchy melody or like the cool harmonies or the like catchy rhythm or something. But in these songs, I feel like they're much more... Um, uh, raw poetry really set to music like it's very um, evocative of like the words in a really clean and um, direct way um, so yeah I feel like even more uh, there's definitely like a sense of the landscape for sure um, there's a lot of like expansiveness and a lot of uh, openness I would say but also I think just the way that Karen has has conceptualized these poems she um listened to John's interpretations, of course, um, at the beginning, but then took her own direction and 
took w- directions that I wasn't really expecting based on the music that I was accustomed to. And so it's been really interesting to think like, oh, wow, you saw this so differently and you have made it come alive in this new way that's an emotionally different experience from what I'm used to hearing in this poem. Yeah. What's it like to hear those words that were written in a very different context? Mm-hmm. And what's it like to sing them in this in, with this, this <laughs> new lens on them? Is there like an added challenge to performing words because of that context and because you knew of the original source material? Yeah, I would say definitely in this uh, particular concert, I'm in a way taking on the role of John Sampson (laughs) because he wrote these words and he also sang these words originally, right? And so now they're given to me through this new work and um, I have to sort of navigate a new way of storytelling. And I would say, speaking to what Lisa just mentioned, Karen's settings of these uh, particular poems are, um, they're very much exposed. So yeah, there's no drum kit. (laughs) And the melodies are maybe a bit reminiscent of the original tunes here and there, but it is a totally new interpretation and take of these um, particular poems and songs. So yeah, I'm feeling that uh, the words especially are quite out there and exposed. And um, yeah, I, I hope I present them well. <laughs> Much like standing on a on, exactly. on the yeah, avenue exactly. of Yes. With, and may I just add no, to yeah. that? Um, like when uh, another inspiration for this project is that when I went to the Franz Schubert Institute in Austria, we had the experience of hearing the same poem set by different composers. And that really struck me how, like, f- the one that sticks out to me in my mind is Die Meinacht. I was so used to the Brahms setting of Die Meinacht. I'd heard it a million times. And then I was at Schubert Institute and I heard the Schubert setting. And I was like, what? This is so different. It's such a different perspective. Still a beautiful poem, a very beautiful song, but in such a different way. And it, they bring out such different things in the poetry that you already know so well. So that was sort of why I wanted to do this um, also, because I love these poems so much as poems. And so then hearing them in a different setting is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, it strikes me that Winnipeg is a place that gets viewed very differently by very different people, depending on where they are (laughs) living in the city, whether they are maybe Winnipeg expats who are listening from afar. What do you think that a listener from Winnipeg will take away from hearing too far to walk that maybe somebody who is from outside of the community might not understand. Mm. Hmm. Well, you know, I, to be honest, I saw this morning that um, I think it was John posted about this upcoming concert. And in the comments, there were people who he's known from over the years and friends who are in this city and who are abroad and they're looking forward to hopefully hearing these words again. And and so I know that people from all over the place are gonna be looking forward to hearing these this particular um, material again. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to being part of that. <laughs> John K. Sampson also has maybe his most famous lyrics are the ones that are about the place where he's from, but not necessarily the celebration of the place that he's from. If I think about the the oft quoted I hate Winnipeg lines, (laughs) Um, is this song cycle a celebration of Winnipeg? Is it a an encouragement Hmm. for Winnipeg or is it maybe somewhere in the middle? You know what? I will further speak to (laughs) your last question and this one. (laughs) I think Winnipeg just in general has lots of uniqueness about it in as a as a as its own Canadian city. It's dang cold for a lot of the year, which we all know and we have the reputation for. And that's spoken to in the um, lyrics as well. I know that when Lisa and I have been talking about these words, we've thought about how it connects to our um, experiences being in uh, Winnipeg and in the prairies. And I think that when people hear these words um, and rehear these uh, 
this poetry from songs they're familiar with, they're gonna have their own connection to this chilly city. <laughs> and um, whether it's good or uh, a, a good or a positive or otherwise uh, interpretation, um, we all as Winnipeggers have connections to um, a thought of something being just a bit too far to walk to in the winter time. <laughs> but also I think that, I mean, for example, talking about like the dirtiness of the alleys in the springtime, mm. like um, winter dies the same way every, every spring, he says. And that sort of thing, I feel like it's not a pleasant image necessarily, but it's sort of like ours, you mm -hmm. know, like we can relate to it and we can feel it. And I don't know if I necessarily see it as positive or negative, but just like you're there and like you're in it, you yeah. know, and and it feels personal. It just mm. is. It just is. In a sense. <laughs> Lisa, you come to Winnipeg from Saskatchewan. I do. Um, what do you think that someone from your hometown, your community, <laughs> would take away about Winnipeg based on listening to this piece? I mean, if I'm honest, I think it would confirm their biases. <laughs> Like, I mean, people from Saskatchewan, it's it's a reciprocal relationship where people from Saskatchewan right. think Winnipeg is gross and vice versa. Winnipeg, Winnipeggers don't like Regina. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but They'll like in it. The same, but in this, as you're talking, though, it occurs to me that it might also like confirm biases in a good way for somebody who maybe is has left Winnipeg and misses it terribly yeah. and can evoke that can evoke nostalgia on the one side of the coin, but also maybe... Uh, a, a shudder <laughs> on the other side. Yeah. I think it's just all about, to me, um, the reason that I love John's words so much is that I just feel like they're really my life. Like I can mm. see myself in these exact images that he creates so much of the time and these emotional states and stuff. Like I feel so personally connected to the way that he writes. And I know that I'm certainly not alone in that. Like it's a universal experience, I think, with his words. So um yeah, again, like whether it's positive or negative, it just is like it's real and it speaks really, really strongly to your soul, if mm -hmm. I may. <laughs> yeah. Too Far to Walk, only one small part of this concert this weekend mm -hmm. with uh, Winnipeg Arts Council. What else can people uh, expect to hear? We touched on a few of the other musicians that are there, but I understand that, that this cycle isn't the only thing that you two will be performing. Yeah, so it is like a pretty exciting lineup, I think. I think it's a bit of a unique experience to hear. Um, we're starting off with like spoken poetry with cello. So it's sort of like music with words, but not sung. And then Teresa Thorderson will do a set of her stuff, which is um, like singer songwriter but mm -hmm. she's an excellent pianist. I went to university with her and Brandon as well. And um, so her work is really intricate and um, sort of classically inspired, I would say, but a little more folky. Um, and then uh, Aaron and I will share the final set with Don Brook Weens. Um, so Don and I are going to do two um, settings, speaking again of like hearing the same poem through two different lenses. Um, we'll be doing two settings of Dennis Cooley's, one of his Bloody Jack um, poems. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are also actually for the first time as well, um, performing two songs from a set called Songs from Isolation by local composer Chris Byman. Uh, he's a clarinetist, also from Brandon, huh? Um, <laughs> or f that I went to school with in Brandon. He's from Winnipeg. And uh, his uh, collaborator on these songs, they were a pandemic project. And Heather Jean Thorderson, Teresa's sister, was the poet. Uh, for these songs. So it's super exciting to perform two of those. They're really exciting songs. Um, and then Aaron and I will do uh, two songs by Tawny Olson, who I believe is from Alberta, but um, these songs were commissioned by the Canadian Art Song Project in 2016. Mm. And there, is, there are three, but we're going to do two of the three songs uh, on poems by Laurie Nielsen Glenn who is an expat of Winnipeg, but we still claim her as a Winnipegger. <laughs> She's been living in Halifax for many years, but um, she, you know, as my husband says, like Halifax is really like exactly like Winnipeg, just on a different, yeah. uh, <laughs> on a different landscape. Um, so we'll do two of those songs. And then the final set will be the uh, set we've been talking about. Incredible. Yeah. I understand that we'll get to hear a little bit of the Tawny Olson here in studio this morning. Aaron, maybe you can set up what we're about to uh, to hear as a piece. Well, the piece that we're going to uh, perform is called Dusk. 
and it sort of paints this picture of that kind of golden hour moment when um, night approaches and the daylight kind of gets um, taken up as if um, it's being caught in a net sort of or being pulled up by a string. Um, it's a beautiful um, depiction of that moment just before night approaches. Incredible. Well, I'll, get, I'll let you two get set up for that moment uh, as uh, I tell people how they can get involved in this uh, in this weekend's concert. Sing Me a Song You've Never Heard Before takes place this Saturday, November 16th, 8 p.m. at the West End Cultural Center. Tickets and more information can be found at cityofsong.ca. And from that concert, here now is Lisa Rumpel at the piano and tenor Aaron Hutton to perform Dusk. The 
folly of ambitious plans, we trade for rest and abject peace.